In this video, you'll witness the uncommon life oh my God. and diet of Indonesia's Badui people. Oh, wow. So the honeycomb is right here and it's covered with bees. But first, let's back up. In the Bantan region of Indonesia, in the remote hills, you'll find the Badui. An isolated society known for its strict laws. If you transgressed, what were the consequences you might face? Including the complete prohibition of technology. That means no TVs, no phones, no bikes or cars. Is it really worth it? Here, the Badui people live life now as they did hundreds of years ago. Have you ever held a phone? <laughs> Today, I'm on a mission to reveal the secret of this lost culture. Today, I have resolved to catch the bees as they catch the bees with my bare hands. I want to see how they live. This man has no fear. He's also wearing shorts, no shoes, and he has a very nice bandana like me. And how they eat. Did you know this, squirrel, personally? And it all starts here. Today, I'm going to meet the Amish of Asia. These are the Badui people. The reclusive Badui, or Kanakas, has been able to preserve their traditional lifestyle for more than 400 years. This is one of the rare preserved tribes you'll find anywhere around the world these days, and it's because they don't really allow outsiders to enter the inner circle. We're gonna get as close as we can, but we're gonna have to go to the outer circle. This is a protective layer around the inner circle that prevents people like me from wandering in. As trite as it sounds, they live in harmony with nature, meaning they won't even change the landscape to grow crops, and they don't raise livestock. Since I'm kind of unsure about the food situation there, I've opted to bring some food to them as a gift. Now, they can eat these and outsiders can bring these inside. This is a basket of chicken. Different from a bucket of chicken, but not that different. I've got my chickens. We're headed to the village now. Meanwhile, in the Badui village, breakfast is being prepared. Here, the food that starts their day, it's got a lot more kick than coffee. I'm talking about sambal tomatoes and chilies, mashed into a fine paste. Fry up shallots and mix with the fiery red mixture. Finish with salt and sugar, then reduce it until you get the flavor condensed final product. There's a splendid looking breakfast in front of us. It looks like what five-star hotels try to do, but they cannot quite reach something that looks this beautiful. This is Julie and his wife Sarni, both members of the outer circle. This is a must menu and weddings and special occasions like that. Bridging the gap between me and the Badui, former journalist Tacha. So you start obviously with the rice. Since the Badui cannot raise livestock, their staple food is rice, as well as several vegetables that they grow here. Eggplants, cucumbers, cassava leaves, and the papaya leaves are boiled. Oil. The greens are commonly called lalapan. They're dipped and eaten with sambal. You like it? Oh yeah. A little spicy, but not too spicy. All the flavor is coming from the sambal. These vegetables are just boiled. In fact, without the sambal, it's pretty much going to be flavorless. Sambal tastes tomatoey, it's spicy, and there's a great chew to the cassava leaves. This one is the boiled pate. This one is the raw one. This is pate. Oh, it smells good. Also known as stink beans. It smells good, really? Yeah, it smells like garlic. Oh my, but it, it is stinky. They can have a potent, somewhat rancid taste, but the real stink comes well after the meal has ended. Wait until you go to the toilet oh, after this. Well, we probably won't film that part, but you know, on our yeah, OnlyFans, we'll do a bonus video. They can be boiled. It's kind of snappy and crunchy, like between a peanut and a lima bean or eaten raw. Mmm, it's more like a green bean, like kind of chlorophyll taste to it. I like both. Finally, dried fish with coconut. Start by slicing up the dried fish, then add it to a banana leaf with coconut and spices and steam. Oh wow, yeah, the fish tastes almost like pickle. Try with the coconut. Mm. Gives different flavor, right? Mm -hmm. The fish is kind of powerful, so you want something to go with it, but the coconut might be a little plain without the fish. They're a good duo. Mm. This is all excellent. Here, you guys don't eat a lot of meat, or do you? I try, I try. This is the difference between inner Badui and outer Badui. Here, sometimes they eat beef or lamb, but it is forbidden in inner Badui. They only eat chicken and fish. That's it? Yeah. Like many others here, Julie and his family used to live in the inner circle. Can you tell me about the sacred inner circle? Over time, the intense pressure of the Badui lifestyle gave way to a fracturing, which divided them into two groups. The inner circle is considered pure, mainly by those inside the inner circle. There are so many things forbidden in the inner Badui. 
they adhere to rigid social tenets. They cannot go by transportation, use electricity. They also wear white hat bands, no other colors. And if they don't, they may face harsh consequences. Each village has partner village, but from Outer Badui that is used as traditional jail. The one that breaks the law will be sent there. The outer circle consists of those who felt they couldn't live up to the strict Badui standards. When you lived in the inner circle, what did you do to make money? He sold fruits and vegetables like this, so he went outside to the market and he sold it. No one sells inside the inner Badui. So you were in a very exclusive community, but to make a living you had to interact with people around you, so you're constantly seeing the modern world, cars, telephones, all forms of technology that he was not able to interact with. What was the moment where it was just too much and you felt like life would would have to be better outside than inside. Sure, people in the outer circle use technology, but I suspect they were driven here in search of social freedom. He just didn't think that it was right to have that strict rules like that. So he chose to go outside because he thought that he couldn't change the law in inner Badui. Soon, I'll experience the most extreme protein source consumed by the Badui. Oh my god! But first, the most dangerous daily chore in the village, harvesting bee larvae. Behind me, a box full of bees, also full of larvae. The bees don't really love letting their babies get stolen. That's what we're gonna do anyways. How it works is this. You rub this on your hands. This is Sinte leaf, an herb that locals use as a bee repellent. Let's hope that it works. Today, I have resolved to catch the bees as they catch the bees. Not with any protection, not with a bee suit, not with any netting, but with my bare hands. Why? Because that's what they do, so I can do it too. I assume, probably incorrect. Meanwhile, take a look at my camera guys. They're both outfitted with face nets and dishwashing gloves. They're gonna be 100% safe and that dishwater is not gonna hurt their hands at all. You guys ready to wash some dishes? Let's do this. Right here, he has a coconut husk. He's lit it on fire. This is gonna be used to smoke out the bees. Meet the extraction expert, Mad. Bees hate smoke. Without gloves or a head net, Mad approaches the angry bees without hesitation. Oh, that is absolutely 100% full of bees. Why am I doing this? This isn't jackass. Now he's putting the coconut husk inside of the box. The bees starting to fly. They are confused, they're bewildered. They really dislike smoke. Now he's gonna slowly start pulling out the larva and he's gonna put it on this plate. Oh, wow. So the honeycomb is right here and it's covered with bees. Oh my gosh, there's so many bees. There's all around me. There's hundreds of bees just on this honeycomb alone right now. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's so much. <gasps> okay, now they're on me. I feel the wind of their wings caressing me. I'm worried about talking and breathing. I don't want one to go in my throat. I feel like some of them are crawling in my hands, but no stings. I'm feeling good so far. For the Badui, bee products are a crucial source of income. Now it looks like he's closing up the box. It's empty. In fact, their forced honey is famous throughout Java. So now we've gone a short distance from the nest. He's going piece by piece, and he's going to pick up each part of honeycomb and try to get the bees off of it. Amazingly, he's not getting stung at all. He just kind of swipes the bees to the side and they leave. Mostly they leave. Can you do that? He just jumped out the bees. I'm gonna leave in just a moment so I don't get stung in the eyeball, but that is how you do it. We're gonna get everything and go take a look. Somewhere else, a little bit less bee infested. Good work, good work. Right here, we have the product we were after. I got through with no stings, and my guy just got one sting. And he's a pretty tough dude, so I think he's okay. Let's talk about the larva. Most of the time when you see combs like this, it's filled with honey. But here, this one is full of pupa, or young bees at different stages of development. How it works is the queen lays an egg in each cell. After a few days, it hatches, and it starts to eat everything that's inside. Within just a few days, it gets 1,500 times bigger. Once it's big in that cell, the worker bees put a cap on top of it. So that is what you see here. Here. And you can actually pull the cap off and you will see something like this. And this is like a mini cocoon inside of that cell. They are gonna somehow get all these larvae out of the honeycomb itself and we're gonna eat them. Preparations have begun for a traditional Badui dinner, including that bee larva we just retrieved. Protein is a rare treat here, and since they don't raise animals, they must subside on whatever happens to cross their path, including this. Wandering around the village here, they have little convenience stores. Places like this where you can get snacks, maybe some soap, shampoo, but they also have this. These are squirrels that's been locally hunted by the Badui people. They hunt squirrels, they catch squirrels, they eat squirrels. Whatever they do, I do. Grilled squirrel. They start by singeing the fur. Extract the organs and throw them on bamboo skewers. 
add a generous salt sprinkle, and grill until they're cooked through. Dinner is served. What do you think? <laughs> oh, they're happy. They're very happy. Joining us, Julie and his daughter, Naipa. This is an incredible spread right here. It reminds me of a Filipino boodle fight. First of all, this is the chicken. To make chicken stew with coconut milk, you'll first need to dispatch a chicken. The only issue is, even though the outer circle is a place of relative social freedom, some rules never die. Here, they're not allowed to dispatch chickens within the village. The solution? Step outside the village edge and ask a non-Badui person to do it for you. Is there a reason for it that they know or that's just the way it is? Because the chicken that they have here are only for the owners, for the ritual events or weddings. Then it's okay. Yeah. In a wok, fry up turmeric paste. Add fresh coconut milk, bay leaves, tomatoes, salt, and seasoning powder. Then the chicken. Oh, it's very nice. Delicious spices, lots of turmeric, not super strong, powerful flavors. Some Indonesian food can be very powerful. This is not like that. This is just more like gentle home cooking. I love that. Mm -hmm. We have two foods left, and I feel like we should build up to that one. This is the bee larva here. How does it work? After the honeycombs are cleaned, they're cut down to size, seasoned with salt, and wrapped in banana leaves. Then grilled over fire for 30 minutes. Oh, wow. What? So she's gonna pick one out. She's trying it for the very first time. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I got a piece right here. Uh, this is definitely the larva. Let's try it out. Mm. It has a leathery exterior. It manages to be chewy, a little bit sour, very earthy. I kind of like it. Do you like it for real? She likes it, but doesn't feel like eating it again. Oh, sounds like she doesn't like it. <laughs> Basut, right here, we have the squirrels. Did you know this squirrel, personally? Yeah, she cooked it. How do you know if you cooked it properly, since you've never eaten it? I'm trying to tear a piece off, and it is not easy. There's no blood anymore, so you know that it's already cooked. Try it out. A bit salty, a little bit of seasoning on there. I want to say it's smoky, because I guess the outside is kind of charred. But the meat itself is very soft, it's chewy, but in a juicy way. Very nice. I'm just so fascinated with this place because there is this inner circle, this sacred place that I've just heard stories about. I've seen a couple people walk through the village, but it's a place I'll never get to see. And there's people here who used to live there. They can still go there, but they choose to not live there, to not have to abide by the intense, strict rules there. Are you happy that you left? He's happy about his decision and no regret at all because he say he can feel the freedom here, but he can also still see his family in Inner Badu. This decision that you made nearly 20 years ago, how will it affect your kids and your grandkids? Even in Inner Badui or in Outer Badui, the family depends on him. So the one thing that makes a difference is how he can make money. It's a lot easier for him to make money here in Outer Badui because the rules are not too strict. You left the inner Badui, but you still are living among the Badui people. Still, many of the traditions, customs, foods, ways of dressing and living are still maintained here. So there must be something that you still like about the Badui culture. Why did you stay here instead of just completely removing yourself? It's enough here, and it's still near to inner Badui, so it's enough for him. It seems like an ideal situation. He still gets to see his family. He still gets to be among his people. He just doesn't have all the rules. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. That's your sambal? <laughs> you put on like a micro scoop. I used to do that when I was a kid. With my mom, we had to eat every single food that was on the table. So if I didn't like it, I would smear around some residue and then say that I had some. That's what he's done here with the sambal. It's so... <laughs> Is there like a fight club behind me? You don't like sambal, huh? He's afraid he's, he's got stomach cake. It didn't stop him from giving me plenty of sambal. <laughs> How do you say thank you? Hatur nohon. Hatur nohon. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. yeah. He wants you to try the cucumber. I will put it on my plate and smear around a residue. Okay. So he thinks that I ate cucumber. I have my feet planted firmly on the earth. I am holding still. The bees think I am a tree. They think I'm a pale white German tree with good abs. <laughs> 
Guys, thank you so much for watching. That is the end of this video. I want to say a huge thank you to Tasha. Thank you. It's actually her first time being here, but she speaks the same language. I think you did a great job helping us communicate and try foods you've never tried before, like squirrel. Yes, and the bee larva. <laughs> you can check her out right here on Instagram. Give her a follow and see what she's up to in her daily life. That is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. We usually say peace. Oh, peace. Peace. All right, cool. Now, I did see some other animals in cages, and I think if we ask politely,